Recently, I've been developing a bit of an obsession trying to find just the right everyday carry point and shoot film camera. I thought I found it with this one, but as we're gonna see in this video, it didn't work out. And then I thought I found it with this one, and uh, I might have, but let's let the photos speak for themselves. For those of you that are new here, my name is Steele Johnson. I'm just a hobby photographer here on YouTube, making videos documenting film photography and trying a bunch of cameras to see what I like, what I don't, what works and what doesn't. And let's start with what doesn't. In my previous video, I talked all about this camera. This is the Nikon One Touch 100, came out in 1990. I thought I found a mint copy on Mercari and it worked great for one roll of film. And then as I was shooting my second roll of film, I started to experience a major issue. So you're looking at the photos and you're like, these look just like the last video. Everything seems to be going fine. It seems to be okay. Um, and then the roll just kind of stops. So I was shooting a roll of film as I do, walking around excited. It was a little bit of golden hour going on. I was really pumped to see what I could get from this camera, again, now knowing it works. And all of a sudden, at about 10 shots in, the roll of film automatically rewound into the canister and that roll of film was done. This is the same issue I've had with my Minolta Maxim 3000i where it only does half of a roll and then it automatically rewinds. I don't know how to fix it personally. I'm not gonna spend the money to send in a cheap camera like this to get fixed. So I'm just considering this camera dead. So to kind of go off the last video, would I recommend buying this? Honestly, yes, if it works. If you can find one that works, that doesn't have any issues, the images from this camera are awesome. The flash is annoying because you can't control it, but other than that, it's a great point and shoot camera. With that being said, I still wanted to shoot film and recently my old diving teammate, Brandon Lociavo, sent me a package of a lot of his film gear. So he's not shooting film right now, he's shooting mostly digital, shooting a paper shoot camera. If you wanna see his stuff, check the link in the description. But in that box of film stuff he sent me was this little point and shoot reloadable disposable camera. So Brandon sent me this camera. It is the simple use reloadable film camera from Lomography. If you know Lomography, you know they make different types of film stocks that have crazy colors or very muted colors. And in this camera specifically, it came preloaded with Lomography Metropolis, which if you know that film stock, you know it is very desaturated and it makes everything look very gray. Or so I thought. There's not much to say about this camera specifically. I think it has an F11 lens. It's essentially a disposable camera that you can just open the back of and put new film in it. While that's niche and that's cool, it is still the quality of a disposable camera. So it's not great, it's not amazing, but it is fun, it is light, and it is a simple everyday use film photography camera. And I very much appreciate that. That all being said, there were two major issues I had when shooting with this camera. First, the camera was loaded with Lomography Metropolis. It set it on the canister. It set it on the camera. And when I sent the photos off to get developed and scanned, they look exactly like Lomo Purple. And unfortunately, I wasn't smart enough to get a picture or do B-roll images of the roll of film itself like I normally do. Since it was preloaded in the camera, I was excited to just go shoot it and send it off. And that was my bad because now I'm just incredibly confused at what the difference between Lomo Metropolis and Lomo Purple is. Putting that issue aside, I'm happy with some of the shots I got from this camera. It had such a unique look, but it really made me want to go pick up actual Lomo Purple and kind of compare to see if it was actually Lomo purple in a mislabeled canister. But that wasn't the issue with the camera. The big issue with the camera came when I opened the back after rewinding the film to see that the film was not rewinding at all. 
So the way it works is this camera has a little latch on the back, you flip that, it unlocks the roll of film, you can spin this dial to rewind it back into the canister, and I did that, or so I thought. And I opened up the back of the camera to see none of the film had moved at all. That being said, a lot of the images got light leaked, a lot of the images got destroyed, and what I had to end up doing was go into the bathroom, turn off all the lights, plug underneath the doors to make sure no light got in, pitch black bathroom, I took the roll of film all the way out of the camera, literally pulled it, probably destroyed some of it, scratched it up, and had to manually force the film back into the canister, and that was a nightmare, and that's another reason I can't use this camera anymore because it doesn't actually rewind the film. So overall, this video was kind of a disaster. I used two cameras I was really excited to try out and both of them broke in some fashion. And this one, it just auto rewinds before even half a roll is done. And this one doesn't rewind at all, no matter how hard you try. That being said, your results will vary. I don't know if I just have two damaged cameras that you know, this one on Mercari, they weren't honest about its condition. And this one, well, Brandon didn't tell me anything about this one. He just threw it in the box and I started using it. So at the end of the day, the photos came out, the cameras worked and they made images and it was fun to shoot with, but I'm back to square one with having no point and shoot film camera. And that's something I still really want to have to be able to carry with me every single day. So what did you guys think of the images in this photo? Let me know down in the comments which camera you thought produced a better image and which rolls of film you liked better. Did you like the crazy colors of the Lomo Metropolis or did you like the Fuji Extra Superior 400 or whatever I had on the Nikon camera? And at the end of the day, I'm still searching for that point and shoot camera. I'm not willing to spend Contax T2 money, but I wanna find something that's gonna work. So if you have any suggestions, let me know down below. I'm ready to pick one of these cameras up and test it here on the channel. So that's gonna be it for this video. If you're not subscribed, be sure to subscribe. We're about to hit 500 subscribers. It's been cool to watch this community grow in such a short amount of time. And thank you to everyone over on Patreon for supporting this channel. Because of you guys, I'm able to keep buying rolls of film and keep developing them for this channel. So thank you so much. If you wanna sign up to be a Patreon member, the link is in the description. I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.